welcome to the Aging Boomers. I'm your host, Frank Sampson, and of course, on our show, we discuss so many of the issues facing boomers, their parents, and what we know, of course, is an aging population. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, everybody for joining us. I want to thank for all your support. Our listeners are growing each and every day. Uh, many of you are going on to iTunes, some going on to iHeartRadio, registering. You could certainly download the free app on your iPhone or Android phone. Just go in, type in the Aging Boomers, and get up to date on all of our uh, interviews. So uh, thank you for your support. You could also go to our website, of course, at uh, theagingboomers.com. Want to let everybody know that today's show is sponsored by Senior Care Authority, a professional senior placement and elder care management organization that has a national network of advisors to help in determining the right path for senior living, receiving proper care, and just overall senior care consulting. So whether it's in-home care, assisted living, residential, or memory care, Get the necessary advice from a senior care advisor in your area by calling Senior Care Authority at 888-809-1231. Or you could go directly to the website at www.SeniorCareAuthority.com. And I want to uh, introduce our guest today. Very uh, interesting subject matter. Uh, we're going to talk about a little about health and wellness, taking care of ourselves. Uh, Debbie Rosas is the creator and co-founder of the global fitness and lifestyle practice, NIA, which is based upon the body's way, a system used to live, move, and feel great at any age. She is the author of the NIA Technique and Non-Impact Aerobics. Her, her work is featured in over 800 publications and used over 65,000, uh, used by over 65,000 people weekly in over 51 countries, talked by 2,600 teachers. So Debbie, I just want to thank you so much for uh, joining us on The Aging Boomers. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Frank. I'm uh, very excited to, to share my knowledge and uh, give people some advice as to do what I say. How can we live well and die well? And, you know, we're living longer and we want to live vital, happy, healthy, and meaningful lives. And everything we do happens in a body. So uh, I really love talking about the body and how to make that experience, that relationship, one that will create sustainability comfort and pleasure great great so t tell us give us a little history how long has uh, uh, Nia been around what kind of led you into it and okay. <laughs> well let what led me into it really was my body speaking to me and saying that you know there's got to be a better way a better way than traditional exercise that really oftentimes goes against the body and lucky am I that I listened to my body back then, 40 years ago, when at the height of the aerobics boom, I went to a martial art dojo, took my shoes off, felt my body like I had never felt before because I heard the voice of sensation speaking to me, which is the voice of the body. And I had oftentimes just kind of ignored that voice, pushed through. And I made the choice that day to develop a loving relationship with my body. What I say is that the body really is the most important relationship you will ever have. It's the most valuable thing that you own. And so taking off my shoes and exploring movement through my body was the beginning of not only changing my life and creating a whole profession, but actually changing the course and destiny of the fitness industry itself. You know, back then, 40 years ago, uh, hard was better, uh, pain was gain, and when I said, let's take off the shoes, let's don't jump up and down, let's begin to move consciously, and let's listen to our body, it was radical. But that radical approach actually was taken up by the industry and then low impact aerobics, softer aerobics. And what you know as the mind body industry was really created by that act of taking off my shoes and asking the question, is there a better way? Well, there is a better way. And that way is the body's way. And what I mean by the body's way is 
that when you look at the body, it's design, the bones, the joints, muscles, ligaments, tendons, that design tells you exactly how you should be living in your body and using your body. And when it comes to aging, there's nothing more important than using your body based on its design. For example, right now, Frank, you can, if you just, with your palms down, take a breath in. I call that smelling the moment. And just notice how much volume and space you have inside to fill with the breath. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to ask you to do the opposite. I'm going to ask you to turn your palms up. Just let your elbows rest. Turn your palms up and do that again. Inhale and smell the moment. And you might notice a difference. Mm -hmm. And did you notice a difference at all with your palms up or down and the amount of breath you could get in? Yeah. Unless I really messed up, it seems palms up, huh? You got it, Frank. Palms up. And so why is that? That's because the design of the upper body, the shoulder girdle, is designed to be open. So when your palms are up, your shoulder joints are open, which means there's, there's more relaxation in your chest. Your lungs can fill. Your diaphragm can do its job. There are simple body techniques like this that we can use and that we can adapt So that, that voice that creeps in that says, oh, I'm getting older, that voice isn't there anymore. Because the truth is, Frank, the body is designed for great, great potential. And none of us get to the owner-operator's guide to how to live and move in your body. Matter of fact, we are born as what I call sensation scientists. If you think about it, Sensation is the voice that we learned to listen to as children to provide what we need most, and that is nourishment. And I'm not talking about just food. I'm talking about love and comfort and touch. And those things are so important to any body living in a body. And so while I did focus on the traditional uh, aspects of fitness and NIA, which is the workout portion of my work, which, as you mentioned, uh, people can take classes uh, throughout, throughout the world in 51 countries, that program was developed to become more holistic, to not only address the needs of the body, the physical nature of who we are, but also the mind so that we get good functioning for our brain and we get the opportunity to express ourselves and use movement as a creative outlet. And then emotionally. You know, emotions are a very important part, Frank, to the body. Emotions create the coupling effect between the mind and the body. And emotions are how we personalize things. So I found that when you give people an opportunity to move and become emotionally engaged, they actually are more present in their body and they take more control. And then the spiritual nature of human beings. You know, each one of us has a thumbprint, a fingerprint, and we also have a spiritual print, that which is unique to who we are in the world. And when we are able to connect to that, we feel more spiritually and deeply connected to who we are in this life, in a body. So when Beyond you say uh, physical nature, yeah. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Now, when you so when you say you know, when listening to your body, all right, and and people, I'm sure some people that are listening going, wait, wait, the body doesn't really talk. <laughs> okay, how do you listen to your body? So you're you're saying there's various sensory voices in the body, right? And that's what you. Help, yes, I'm, I'm help actually teach working on a book right now with 45 different voices. But the two voices, Frank, that most everyone understands is the voice of pain and pleasure. Now, pain is a very important signal, even though there are degrees of pain that we can feel from slight, moderate, acute. And pain is a message from the body that says, stop doing what you're doing, adapt and change it so that we, and here's the important thing, we, you are in relationship with your body. Everything that happens to you happens with your body. 
So cooperating with your body, listening to these signals of pain and pleasure is how you develop an ongoing healthy relationship. And pleasure signals are those signals that say, keep doing it, this is right, this feels good, what you're doing is making me feel better, this is giving me more energy. Now, as we live in our body, of course, things change. One of the things that happens from living in a body is if we don't move as simply as getting up and down from the floor, things begin to atrophy. The truth is, if you don't use it, you absolutely do lose it. And there are simple things you can do. One of the important things is to spend one minute getting up and down from the floor every day. It's just 60 seconds. You can do this in your own way and in your own time. It doesn't have to be difficult. Matter of fact, you want to move in a way where you find a path of least resistance. If you look at the feet, for example, one of the things that can happen, particularly as we age in a body, based on the choices we've made and the kind of shoes we wear and the movements that we've done, sometimes the feet begin to lose what they are designed to do, and that is support us from the ground up. So your listeners right now could just take off their shoes, shake their feet, rub their feet, and take a look at them because the bones of the feet are designed to spread and actually move straight out forward into the future. That's not true for everybody. Sometimes the voice of the feet through sensation says, my shoes are too tight, my feet are tired, that's pinching. If we don't listen to those voices and pay attention, then the foot itself can actually change its shape so that then every other part in the body, which is above it, is compromised. It creates pain in the low back, weakness in the leg. Everything gets supported from the ground up, from the feet. And that's one of the reasons I tell people that they should spend time walking in their bare feet so that the 7,000 nerve endings can be stimulated to give them information from the ground up. So, De- uh, so Debbie, people that are listening to this, they're probably, try, probably trying to understand, is this more aerobics? Is this more yoga? Is it a combination of? Help people understand kind of more what the, your, your system is. Well, NIA as a, as a workout is a combination of three main arts. Uh, martial arts, which is where I really learned about the precision and safety of moving the body. And I've combined from the martial arts slow movements. Think about Tai Chi, the slow dance. And then Taekwondo, which are, is the dance of precision and more um, outward burst of energy, more linear. And then Aikido, which is a circular form of movement. And circular spiral movement is where energy moves the most efficiently. And then coming into class, we also add three of the dance arts. We do jazz movements because of the isolation is so good for the small muscles close to the bone. We do modern dance movements, meaning we say change the shape of your body, which is what your body is designed to do. And it will then access the over 200-700 muscle-bone combination that's available when we just start moving and changing shape. And then Duncan Dance is really about looking up, reaching up. Matter of fact, if you're listening to it right now, just look up and reach up with both arms and hands. They may notice, wow, I spend more time looking straight ahead and down, and I forget to look up, which is so important for the body. And that brings us into the healing arts. The healing arts are where you learn in class actually how to consciously and personally train yourself to make healthy and well choices. And that's where you'll find elements that may look similar to you as yoga. We call that the conscious alignment of bones and joints. And then education, body education about how to move from the top, from your head, from the Alexander technique, and then from the work of Moshe Feldenkrais, the fact that anybody living in a body can access sensation and the awareness of sensation in all their body parts. 
When you walk into a class, you'll see people moving all shapes and all sizes, moving fluidly, using their hands, using their voice, and making sound to integrate body and breath. And you'll also see people expressing themselves in a way that When you look out at the classroom, you'll go, my goodness, everybody's moving somewhat in the same way, but slightly different. And that is very important. That means that in a class, you are taught to move the body's way following that map and design, but also blending your body's way. And this is how you get in touch with what your body needs. And I can tell you, our average person in class, I'd say, is uh, probably 50 And we have individuals that are even in their hundreds that uh, do the Nia Technique workout. And that's because there are 52 different moves. We work every part of the body from the fingertips to the toes. Matter of fact, if you just wiggle all of your fingers right now as though you're tickling the space, you're not only strengthening your hands, you're also increasing brain activity. So unlike other programs where they don't pay attention to the detail, movement detail of using your eyes or using sound, using your fingers, uh, wiggling your toes, working out in bare feet, uh, moving the pelvic basin and, and wagging this imaginary tail so you can integrate the spine, Nia really teaches people how to functionally move in their body. So, D- Debbie, you, uh, as I mentioned in your in your introduction, you've got twenty six hundred teachers, fifty one countries. Are these clubs? Is it done uh, via video? Combination of talk to us about it, so people, because as you know, we have listeners well, the classes from all over. are available. First of all, for anybody who wants to work out at home on their own. We have a beautiful resource of DVDs that people can use to work out at home, instructional workout DVDs. And the classes are taught in a variety of environments, from recreation centers to uh, senior centers to hospitals to schools to traditional gyms. And uh, our website, neonow.com, N-I-A-N-O-W.com, is a great resource for people to go online and find either a class or uh, a tape that they believe would provide what they need. They can also call our office. We're happy to help anybody directly and give them personal assistance in choosing what's right for them. And that number is 503-245-9886. And No matter what, I can tell you that within five minutes of moving the bodies away, people fall in love, not only with the movement, but they fall in love with the relationship that they can develop with their body by listening to their body, cooperating with their body. Are the uh, instructors, uh, the teachers that you have, are they all working out of uh, various clubs or senior centers, or could people just set up one-on-one with them, maybe via Skype, or is that even an option? That absolutely is an option. We have uh, teachers, I said, that teach in a variety of locations, and many teachers also do uh, one-on-one Um, For example, we have a wonderful program in New York City that we are running called Wise Moves, where in uh, conjunction with the Jewish Community Center there, we have teachers that go into uh, uh, senior centers where people are homebound and bedridden, and they actually teach them how to move and do these 52 moves in a wheelchair, in a chair, and also in a bed. That's, that's true. And, you know, I will say this, Frank, the book, uh, the Nia Technique book, which you can get through our store at our website or also on Amazon.com uh, by Debbie Rosas and Carlos Rosas, that book has all 52 moves, and I've heard from many, many uh, people who are, take care of their uh, elderly parents that they use this book and they do one movement a day. 
and that they find that it really does make a difference. It not only brings them closer, it gives them something that they can do together uh, with the parents. And of course, anytime we move our body, we are making things better. So if someone wanted to uh, learn how to become a teacher, possibly they're, they're at a senior center or maybe a director of a senior center, how would they go about doing that? How can they learn more and what's involved? Well, it's, uh, we have a wonderful, wonderful training program. Uh, we, we start out with uh, it's a, uh, a seven-day training program. It's a, what called the White Belt, and you learn all of the basics, of the NIA work, and we provide such a beautiful resource of books and uh, CDs and videotapes that makes the learning easy. And as I said, we have someone that's in charge of what we call the Wise Moves program. So they can either call our office and ask for information to be sent about the NIA technique training, or they can go online, uh, again, to the neonow.com website and find out more about the training. But we love to chat with people over the phone in the office. So I'd say please give us a call and we can talk to you and find out what your needs are. Great. You know, there's a question I you know I, I wanted to ask you. I, I wanted to know. I'm sure our listeners want to know uh, something I saw on your site that uh, talked about that everybody is born what you, you call a sensation scientist. Uh, tell us more what that means. What's the sensory IQ that you talk about? Well, sensation is that voice, again, that we're born into, that we listen to, that says, uh, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm wet. All of those things that we learn through our body as a child. And then we learn to actually roll over and crawl and sit up and stand up and walk not with an owner-operator's guide, but through trial and error and beginning to listen to that voice of the body, track the sensation, if this feels good, this feels right, wow, now I have balance, wow, I'm getting it, wow, now I'm walking. And that's why I say we were all born as a sensation scientist. Then unfortunately, as we grow older, that is cut off. Oftentimes a child will say, you know, mommy, I'm hungry or daddy, I have to go to the bathroom. And they say, no, you're not. You know, you just ate or you just went to the bathroom. And the child begins to learn to then not listen to their body and to start think, thinking as a way to make choices and decisions versus going to their body first. And so sensation science is a way to live in your body as a scientist, tracking the sensations of comfort and pleasure, that's the research, and perceiving the body as the laboratory itself. And it's a wonderful way to live. The outcome is developing sensory IQ, not mental IQ, but sensory IQ. And better yet, what this leads to is body literacy. You know, many people spend a lot of time learning how to read and comprehend books, but what about reading and comprehending the messages of your own body. This is something that I believe is equally important as learning to read a book. That's a a great point. What what would you say are really the uh, people could expect as, uh, you know, certain goals? What what could they expect to kind of gain from your program? I mean, some people want to lose weight. Some people want to just get in a better shape, just feel better. Well, I think I I would, yeah, yeah. I'd say, first of all, I guarantee people will feel better. And the feel better comes from developing body awareness. And it's not just becoming aware of something, but what it's what you do with the awareness. And that's why we say me as a holistic practice body, mind, emotion, and spirit. And oftentimes, it's not the exercise that somebody needs to lose weight, but it's more of the mental and emotional exercises that they need to do to lose weight. And, you know, choices and decisions are something that we have to make for our body and for ourselves. And so when we listen to our body and when we choose to be in relationship with it, 
and we quiet down a little bit, most often everyone says, I have begun to listen to my body, cooperate, work with my body, I'm making better choices and decisions, I feel better, I'm moving better, and movement will become a part of my everyday life. You know, weight loss is a an after effect of doing lots and lots of things, but to keep it off, that is the real art, and that comes from looking at all four parts of who you are as a human being. And, you know, as the population ages, one of the issues that's even more important is getting good nutrition. So oftentimes it's not so much about what they're eating, but are they eating? Are they drinking water? Are they getting up and down from the floor for one minute a day? Are they laughing for 30 seconds a day to help strengthen their diaphragm and the core of their body? Are they wiggling all their fingers? Are they touching their skin and rubbing it briskly to increase circulation? There are so many things that we can do to take care of our body when we're in relationship with our body. Well, this is uh, very interesting. Uh, it sounds fantastic. Why, why don't you uh, share with our listeners, because uh, unfortunately we're out of time, but share with our listeners again how they could learn more about uh, NIA and uh, your, your system, your program. Excellent. Well, you can go to our website. That's niaNow.com, niaNow.com find information about classes there. We have the store where you can purchase the Nia Technique book and DVDs. We have a beautiful line of music as well, CDs to move to. And you can call us directly, 503-245-9886. And you can ask any question at all about your body and life and how Nia can help you feel better and move better at any age. Great. Thank you so much. Debbie Rosas, check it out. NiaNow.com. N-I-A-Now.com. Thank you for joining us on The Aging Boomers, uh, Debbie. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. And I want to thank everybody out there for joining us. Just be safe out there, and we'll talk to you all soon.